Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Photoshop Wizardry. It's been a while since I posted a video here, but I wanted to go ahead and start posting more uh, videos to Photoshop Wizardry. I'm actually doing a series on Patreon. So uh, every month I'm going to be coming up with a new uh, Harry Potter Wizarding World focused design lesson. This one is all about fonts. It is uh, fantastic fonts and where to find them. So that uh, I'm going to kind of try and show you guys what types of fonts to use and what types of fonts not to use and where you can find them. And in the patron only content, I'm actually going to show you how I locate unidentified fonts on certain designs and you usually almost 100% of the time I am able to locate the font that I want to find and I can do it quickly. So again that part of the video is going to be patron only. I'm going to go ahead and go over some basic things right now and again if you want to see the full lesson you'll want to head over to Patreon and join at the Hogwarts student tier. So as you can see on my screen here, I do have um, a file open. This is just a, an image that I found on, online and it's just a, a picture somebody took of this Quibbler cover from a book. You can even see the book in the background here. So, I mean, if we zoom in on it, it's pretty high resolution, but you can see it's, it's rough around the edges. There's uh, JPEG artifacts and it's just kind of blurry when you get up close like this. And we want it to look better. We want it to be nice and clean. So we're going to start off and this is going to be the file that I use uh, during these lessons, um, at least the first few lessons, I'm going to be working on replicating this Quibbler cover. So this is going to be sort of my process from start to finish. And the first thing I do is look for the fonts. All right, so let's go over which fonts not to use. And I have a layer right here. These fonts right here, Times New Roman, Arial, Comic Sans. It doesn't matter if you're doing a this isn't specific to Harry Potter design work or Wizarding World design work. Just don't use these fonts. Don't use generic fonts. Uh, most of the pre-installed fonts on your computer, you probably don't want to use if you're trying to go for an authentic vintage feel to your design work. Um, and honestly, no matter what you're designing, I would never use uh, any of these fonts right here in any of my design work. If I'm doing a logo, even a website, I wouldn't want to use any of these fonts because it makes your work look a little bit cheaper than it, it needs to, really. It does uh, cheapen your work a bit to use these just generic pre-installed fonts. You want to find good quality fonts um, with some type of unique aspect to them in, in some way. So, um, and that's a bit different for web design. Web design, uh, I still wouldn't use these in web design, but yeah, um, you can get away with using a more generic looking font in web design, but when it comes to print design, graphic design, you do not want to use these three fonts for sure. And never, ever, ever use Comic Sans. I don't care if you are doing a comic book, you don't use Comic Sans in it. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, more fonts not to use. We're going to go to this website, Harry Potter Fan Zone, fonts, anything on this page don't use it in your Harry Potter design, especially the Harry Potter logo font. It's, I mean, it's not good. It's not a good font to use. Just don't use it. <laughs> um, it's, if you're going for an authentic look, you're not going to find, like look at any of the movie props from the Harry Potter films. You're not going to see them use this logo font. This is just the title font for the movie and it doesn't appear anywhere inside the movie because it would pull you out of the experience, right? It would it would break a, a third wall, I would think. Um, it would make it look a little less authentic. So you want to follow that kind of mindset and don't use this font for anything. All right, next, the Lumos font. This one's not quite as uh, as much of a red flag, but it's still, I, I feel it still cheapens the design a bit to use this, even this font. I mean, these all just look the Fantastic Beasts font. Um, I probably wouldn't use this either. Uh, Crimes of Grindelwald font. It's a cool looking font, but it's, I mean, it's already there as a logo and you don't want to use this in anything that needs to look authentic. Um, yeah, this Hogwarts font, I would never use that. Basically, I will link this page 
so that you can get these fonts if you if you want to see what they look like. Okay, I'm going to take that back because I didn't realize this font was in there, this uh, aquiline font right here. This is actually a pretty good one. This is used on some of the movie props, so um, I'd say not every single... I'm going to backtrack a little bit and say not every single font on this page is a... a, a I, I guess a red flag, this Beetle the Bard font, this one would be okay to use. The Aqualine font would be okay to use. Um, this is not the Daily Profits uh, logo font, but I believe this is a font called Jailbird Jenna. I'm gonna search for Jailbird Jenna font. There it is on defont.com. That's exactly where you can get it for free. And there it is. That is the font that they're it, I mean, it looks the same to me, at least very similar. I wouldn't use this one either. That's like the Charmed logo font. Um, don't use logo fonts. But there are two fonts on this page that are okay to use. The one here that they're saying is Daily Profit is actually Jailbird Jenna on defont.com. This is used on some of the movie props. And then... Um, uh, the Beetle the Bard one is okay, you could use that one, but uh, the Aqualine font, that's a good one to use too. When Mina Lima designed for the um, Harry Potter movies, designed the props for that and for the Fantastic Beasts movies as well, they used a lot of like archival uh, assets, things in the public domain as well, including the fonts. Um, some of them were taken directly out of old typography books, probably scanned in, turned into a font, and then used. Others are existing fonts that uh, you can get a hold of. They're not free, but they're totally worth it, especially this next one I'm going to show you. So the 40 Archive Fonts Collection, and this is on creativemarket.com, is th if you're going to get any of the fonts, like the premium fonts in, that I'm going to show you in this video today, um, the archive fonts is what you want, that 40 archive fonts collection, because it has 40 fonts and they each one of these fonts are used in the movie props by Mina Lima. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to uh, recognize some of them just looking at them like this. So if we take a look down here, you can see a lot of different fonts. There are 40 fonts. So um, let's go back up to this one this man font, M-A-N-N -N font, right here. And then if we go back to Photoshop and check out this Quibbler label, uh, uh, layer, look, the, the word world is definitely that, uh, that font right there. So, yeah, if you're going to get any fonts that are paid, I would do this entire collection. Um, it is... $99 uh, if, if you want to get the whole set um, or if there are only you can look at this page I will link this page and you can look at the images and you can see the names of the fonts so if there are specific fonts that you want just individually you can buy them individually and I think they're about $10 a piece individually so if you just want to spend 20 bucks for a couple of fonts there you go um, okay so now moving on the next Really, I mean, and this is going to be the uh, last thing for the, the free video, the free part of the video. Everything beyond this next part is going to be patron only. So again, if you want to see the entire video with uh, my tips on how to actually locate and find um, fonts that, that you don't know what they are, unknown fonts in design work, and just go ahead and sign up for the Hogwarts student tier on Patreon and I, you will get access to all of my design videos. This is the first one in a series, so right now there's only going to be this one, but we're going to be doing a video at the end of every single month for at least the next four or five months. Um, I'd like it to just continue as long as there's enough content to go over. So anyways, the next thing we're going to talk about is this website, and this is uh, Tetesha or Tetisha, I'm not sure. I'm going to say t uh, Tetesha.com. Um, Tetesha McIntosh, it looks like, is the person who owns this website. And this person has gone through and painstakingly uh, matched fonts for you. So if you go to this website, you can find uh, tons of fonts. 
for example, let's just click in on one of these uh, right here. This monsters font. This comes from the Monster Book of Monsters from the cover of it, and it is a font called Gaudi Lombardi. And if we take a look, here it is. Oh, it's on the Fantastic Beasts cover as well. Um, yeah, it's a very medieval looking font. But anyways, yeah, they have links to uh, where you can get them right here. It's from it says vendor my fonts. So if you click on my fonts, you can go over here. You can see the font right here, uh, Gaudi Lombardi, and it is 20, 20 bucks. And I do own this one as well. I own a lot of these fonts. I've picked them up over the years. But um, yeah, most of the fonts that you're going to find in the Harry Potter movies and the Fantastic Beast movies are not free fonts. Some of them are. You can find some really good free fonts, but uh, most of them are going to be premium fonts. You're going to have to pay a little bit of money in order to get your hands on these premium fonts. Um, okay, so that is it. I really hope that this video helped you guys out and what fonts to use and what fonts not to use if you're creating authentic Wizarding World props and things like that or whatever. So um, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if this helped and if you have any suggestions on uh, future design lessons, let me know if you have any ideas down below and I will definitely be reading every single comment. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, you can find uh, the full length video with this next part on Patreon at the Hogwarts students tier. Uh, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.